Welcome to the very first ever Smoops of this year. The fact that you are here means that you are awesome. Now, you should have in your hands a booklet. That is for you, for groups. For you to track along with what we're talking about, for you to write notes, for you to read the verses, for you to read some verses throughout the week about what we talked about, all of those things for you. And so even today, as we're having this conversation, use your book, write some notes down, draw a picture, if it makes sense to draw a picture because of what we talk about. Use the book that your leader has given. I remember when I started middle school, when I started, actually when I started junior high, I remember a couple of things changed, right? I remember sports being a much bigger deal. I remember that now, if you got in trouble, you were going to get detentions. We actually had this one teacher that if you got in trouble with him and you got a detention, you had to stay in from recess. It wasn't after school, it was during school. You had to stay in from recess and you had to wipe off all of the like skid marks that your shoe would make on the floor uh, on your hands and knees for like the full 30 or 45 minutes or however long recess was for that day. But I also remember for me, when I first started junior high, I was in a brand new school. I, I had been at a school from kindergarten through sixth grade. And I remember I was in seventh grade at this brand new school. I didn't know any of the teachers. No one knew me. And I remember we were at this beginning of school, almost like assembly. The principal got up. He gave this speech about how this year we have the ability to choose our own path. We have the ability to become who we want to become, to make a name for ourselves. And I realized something in that moment. At this school, I get to create my identity. No one knows me from the mistakes that I made when I was in elementary school at my other school. No one knows the awesome things that I've done. No one can know the things that I can do really well or the things that I struggle with. This is a blank slate, completely new. I get to create my identity. So I had an important decision to make. Who was I gonna be at this school? Was I gonna be the smart kid? Was I going to be the funny kid? Was I going to be the nice kid? Was I going to be the kid that was like super athletic and great at all the sports? But I was going to be the kid who was good with the girls? Like, like who was I going to be? I had a decision to make about my identity. I wasn't quite sure yet what decision I wanted to make, but here's what I knew. It was going to be a really big deal. The decision that I made that day about how I wanted people to know me, who I wanted to be, what my identity would become, I knew it was a big deal. Now, I don't know if you've had an assembly like that where you started to piece those thoughts together. Either way, here's what I know is true. All of us at some time, we have to choose our identity. We have to make a decision about who we are or who we're going to be. Now, as I say that for some of you, you're like, that's easy. I'm the, I'm the baseball player. I'm the kid that gets A's. I'm the funny kid. I'm the kid who's awesome on social media. I'm the kid who dances. I play volleyball. And here's what I know, whatever you've kind of already chosen or you've already fallen into, that identity that you've created for yourself, it determines what you do. It determines who you hang out with, how you spend your time. But let me ask you this question. What happens when you say, yeah, my identity is in the fact that I'm the gamer? I can beat all my friends and I'm awesome at video games and then you get that game and you're terrible at it. Or you're the friend that goes, I get A's. You're the kid that says, I excel at school, that is my identity, and then you take that class that you just can't figure out and you just get C's the whole year. When you go, no, I'm, I'm the kid that's in the plays and then you don't get a part. What happens when you build your identity around a thing and then that thing doesn't work out? We feel like we've chosen an identity that we can't live up to. And I know this, some of us, the idea of choosing an identity, that is brand new. You're like, I don't think I get to make that decision. No, my parents made that decision for me a long time ago. My parents told me, you're gonna be a piano player. Put me in lessons, make sure I practice. My parents told me you're gonna play football. My parents told me you're gonna be the kid that gets straight A's. So then what you do is you spend so many hours and you are stressed out trying to live up to the expectation of the identity that your parents or a coach or a teacher has given you. 
See, sometimes we let other people choose our own identity. And then we have to ask ourselves the question, is that the identity that we want for ourselves? Is that what we want to spend our time and energy doing? Is that the thing that we're passionate about? Should that be our identity? Here's what else I know is true. Some of us, yeah, we know we get to choose our identity. Man, and we've chosen a couple already and we just can't seem to find our fit. One week you tried to be the cool skateboarder and you bought a skateboard and you went to the skate park and it was embarrassing. <laughs> and then you're like, no, I'm, I'm gonna be the really smart kid. And then you failed the test. He's like, I I'm gonna be the lead in the musical and you don't get a part. You thought, I I'm gonna be the athletic kid. I'm gonna be best on my team and you get cut or you never get playing time. Maybe you, kind of go in and out of different identities. Maybe it even seems like every week just trying to find the place where you feel like you stick, where you feel like you belong. Maybe we've done that so many times we're just left feeling empty. We think to ourselves, is there even a spot for me? Will I find a place where I fit in? No matter where you land, of either trying to find an identity that you don't feel like you can live up to, or your parents, or your coaches, or your teachers giving you an identity that you don't particularly want, or even you kind of flipping back and forth between different identities, just trying to find the place that you fit. And after every time, we just feel like we haven't found it yet, and every time it makes us feel worse. It might even make us feel empty, leaving us thinking, do we belong anywhere? What could our identity even be? I mean, I mean, here's, here's what's true. Whether you're the kid that feels like you already have your identity figured out and now you feel the pressure of trying to live up to it, or you're the kid whose, whose parents or teachers or, or coaches have kind of thrown an identity on you and now you feel the pressure to live up to that, or you're the kid that feels like they just can't find their identity at all, I think we all can agree that our identity is an important decision that we have to make. Who we are, what we do, why we do it, the answers to those questions, they're gonna determine who we spend the most amount of our time with. They're gonna determine a lot of what our life is about. They're gonna determine a lot of, of how we spend our time, how we spend our money. This decision about identity is a big deal. One that we can't afford to get wrong. And you might be saying then, well, Rothman, then why am I making it right now? <laughs> I'm a kid. How can I make sure that I make the right decision about my identity, about who I am? If it's a really big deal and I don't want to get it wrong, I, I'm nervous that I might not make the right choice. How can I know I'm not going to get this wrong? Well, let me say this. It's a good question. You're not the only one who's ever had it. In fact, people have been having questions and thoughts and conversations about their identity for thousands of years. We're going to read something today written by a guy named John. Jesus is like best friend. And he was talking to people about an opportunity that they have to make a decision about their identity. If, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and get them out or open them up or turn them on. It's also in your booklets. We're going to be in the book of John. We're going to start reading chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 11. It says this. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Maybe as we read that you thought, what in the world <laughs> does this have to do with identity? Well, here's what's true. John's talking about Jesus. And John is saying that Jesus came into the world and, and, and people actually who loved God didn't really love Jesus and they kind of rejected Jesus, but he said they were missing out because their choice to reject Jesus resulted in their choice to reject an identity that Jesus had for them. What identity was that? For them to be able to be children of God. And here's what's crazy. We have that same choice. We have the ability today even to say, I want my identity to be rooted in the fact that I'm a son or a daughter of God that I could be a child of God. See, John says, if you believe in Jesus, he lived a perfect life, he died for your sins, he rose again, he says it's yours. But he says this, you have a decision to make. You can accept that or you can reject it. Some of you might be hearing this for the first time. 
and you're going, for real? I just have to accept it? I want in. Or, or at least I want more information about that. Some of you, you might be thinking, I have accepted it, but I know I've messed it up. I've bought into that identity. I said yes to Jesus. I am for it. And I made a decision that my identity was going to be about God. And then you've said, and I've made mistakes. I kind of stopped living like that was true. I don't pay as much attention to God as I should. I said I was going to stop doing things and I haven't. Maybe some of you feel like, yeah, yeah, I, I accepted that identity, but I didn't live up to it. And because of that, you might even think, I don't think that identity is true for me anymore. I, I think I lost that identity. I feel like I didn't live up or, or hit the mark that that identity needed me to hit. And so I feel like that's not true for me anymore. If you feel like that, can I read you another few verses that's in the Bible in the book of Romans? Chapter 8, it says this when you start reading in verse 31. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who could ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the incredible thing about the identity that we have in Jesus. It's not something that we feel like we have to live up to. It's not something where we wouldn't hit the mark. Man, God would look at us and he would say, the identity is yours. You don't have to worry about losing it. You don't have to worry about not fitting in. You don't have to worry about not measuring up. God says, if you want this to be your identity, all you have to do is choose it. And once you've chosen it, once you've accepted Jesus, once you've made this your identity, nothing and no one could ever take it away from you. So some of you are saying, then tell me how to do that. <laughs> if that's all I have to do, if I have to make the choice, what are the steps? The first thing, you've got to realize that this is a choice that only you can make. Your parents can decide to drive you to group or to drive you to church. Your parents can decide to sign you up for things like camps. Your, your parents can pray for you and can make choices to help you, but you have to make this choice. You have to decide for yourself if you're going to live for Jesus. If you're going to accept the gift that Christ has for you, if you're going to make your identity about God, you have to realize that that's actually your choice to make and nobody else's. A while ago, Lamaru and I were on a, a road trip. We, we road tripped from Ohio all the way to California, and because of that, we had to drive through uh, New Mexico. If you've ever been to New Mexico, there wasn't a ton of stuff where we were. We literally drove through like absolute nothing. We hit up a town called Albuquerque, and then we drove all the way through nothing until we got to the next state. And here's what was true. When we were on the road, a lot of the times, we had other cars around us and we could see if they would pull off to the road, off to the side if things got dangerous. We could see if they would kind of take turns slowly or if they would continue to go pretty quick. And that would kind of be a good indicator for us. Like, oh, well, whatever they did, we would do. Well, I remember this one night we were driving and it began to storm in such a violent way. We were in a storm that neither Lama and I had ever been in before. The lightning would strike so hard and so close to us, we would actually flinch and move out of the way because we thought we were going to be hit. We had conversations about if we needed to call our families and tell them we loved them because we were pretty sure we weren't going to make it out of this storm. And here's what's true. There were no cars around us that were telling us what we should do. There were no cars who were pulling off. 
There were no cars who were like going in a direction of what we thought would be clear. It was just us on this road in this storm and we had to make a decision. Are we gonna keep going or are we going to stop? And we know that if we stopped, we could be in this storm for hours longer. We could maybe get struck by lightning. It was very dangerous. A car could hit us because it was very difficult to see. Or we knew we could keep going. But here's what was true. We had to make the choice. It was on us. There was nobody else around. But we knew we had a destination we wanted to get to. We wanted to get to our next Airbnb. We wanted to get to the next state. We wanted to be done driving. And we knew that the only way to get that was to make the decision to keep going. I know that for some of us, man, we do feel empty. We don't know what our identity is. Or if we're honest, we look back and we don't like what our identity is. We don't like what people say about us. We don't like some of the decisions that we've made. We don't like what our life is about right now. Only you can make the decision to change that. But you have to make the decision. You have to realize it's your choice to make. If you want your identity to be in God, you have to make the choice. You have to accept Jesus. The second thing after you realize it's your decision to make is you have to roll with the changes that come from that decision. I said earlier, the decisions that we make about our identity, it impacts our time, it impacts the people we hang out with, it impacts the things that we're okay with and the things that we like and the things that we're not okay with and things that we don't like. It impacts how we spend our time and how we spend our money. It impacts what we think about and things that we do with our friends. For you to say, my identity is all about God now. That means the things that you do and the things that you say and the choices that you make and what you do with your friends and what you look at on social media, how you talk to people, how you talk about people should be impacted by that decision, by the truth that your identity would be in God, which means there are some friends you shouldn't be hanging out with. There are some things you and your friends, when you are hanging out, shouldn't be doing. It means you shouldn't talk bad about people behind their backs. It means you should be kind to people. You should forgive people. Look for opportunities to help people. You should be loving. You've got to realize it's your decision to make, and then you have to roll with the changes that this shift in identity is going to bring. And then the last one, kind of the coolest one, then you need to reap your rewards. You got to cash in. Your identity in God means a couple of things. One, it means you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. God living inside of you. We can do things like pray. Which means we can connect to the creator and master of the universe whenever we want to. It means we can learn more about God and spend time with God in, in his word. It means this. It means when we die, we get to go to heaven. We have legitimate rewards from this identity. Let's not take those for granted. Let's cash in on that. Let's spend time with God. Let's talk to him in prayer. Let's learn about him through his word. Let's rejoice in the fact that we know what we're gonna be doing a million years from now. We're gonna be partying in heaven. Here's what I want you to think about as we're going into our group times. What's your identity? What would you say it is? What would your parents say that it is? The people that you spend the most amount of time with. Would they say it's your identity is all in the sport that you play? Your, your identity is in uh, school and your academics? Your identity is in the music that you play? The, the plays that you're a part of? Your identity is in being cool or, or popular? Or would they say your identity is in God? That you're someone who loves Jesus and loves other people. And then you gotta figure out what's true of your identity and what do you want to be true of your identity. And if you're someone who's like, man, I, I want it to be true that my identity is about God and you don't know if that is true, have a conversation with your group leader today and be honest with them. If there's something holding you back from really being able to say, I want that to be true for me, Talk about it. Have a real conversation about what your identity is, what you want your identity to be, and how you can get there. This week, we have given you something that we think can be helpful. We say all the time in 678, we should be spending time in our Bibles. We should be reading God's words. But I know that that's sometimes difficult. 
And the Bible can be this large, intimidating book with some words that we don't always understand. We don't know where to start, how much to read, what to do with what we've read. So here's what we've done for you. This year, we've created for you a reading plan. Very, very simple. It's like a couple of verses. Some days, mostly, it's just one verse a day that you would find in your Bible, you would read, and then you'd answer a couple of questions. I want to encourage you, all of you right now listening, to do the reading plan this week. Read the five verses that's in your booklet, answer the questions on the lines that are in there, and then come back next week ready to talk about the things that you read, the questions that you have, the things that you learn that you think is cool, or, or an interesting insight that you got as you were reading it. But this week, do that reading plan. Come back next week ready to talk about it. Go to your groups, have awesome conversations. I'll see you all next week.